Uh, hi guys, good to see you. Well, not everyone see you, but I know you're there. Enjoyed mm -hmm. your lunch, had some coffee. So great day today. I'm, I hope in your place as well, as well as in mine. So let me get straight to the business. Let me share my screen. Let me know Absolutely. if you can see it. Okay, Vladimir, at your own time, you uh, can begin. Okay, so you can see my screen well? All good? All yes. set? Yes. All right. So, guys, let me introduce some the most industry advanced tools when it comes to WordPress management. I don't have any slides for today because I'm going to be like deadly practical. So, this is my test server with Flask. Quite a low end VPS, just, I don't know, 2 GB of RAM, one core, so pretty low end. Nonetheless, it's quite performant thanks to this tool. So, let me just quickly recap what are the biggest scenes in WordPress hosting. So the first one, not installing updates for your WordPress and themes. Second, doing stupid work like cloning websites manually. And third, updating only the WordPress disregarding plugins and themes. So let me just work on that, show how it's done in Plesk and a WordPress toolkit. So since we're speaking in the context of web professionals i assume we are here all web professionals we know what is hosting we know what is domain we know that what is customer servers so here i represent a virtual web agency i'm the guy who manages who manages a bunch of wordpress sites for my customers for my clients so this is what i have this dashboard i can see all the wordpress installations right here in front of my eyes and if some of them require attention, I am attracted straight, straight to the problem. So I intentionally left a few of the sites unsecured just to show how it looks. And just let's go and see what exactly can be the problem. This one was about security. So as you know, if you install WordPress manually, like go to wordpress.org, download all the zip file, unzip it and run install.php, by default, WordPress comes not exactly secure, not up to the best practices um, developed by the community. Uh, out of many security options, we know some critical things that we do by default when you install WordPress through this tool. These two guys will be implemented automatically. As you can see, all the settings have comprehensive explanation, what, are, what the problem is exactly, what the consequences, and what can be repercussions if you do this. When it comes, for example, for, to uh, compatibility of the plugins, some of the settings can be too restrictive. So two things here are critical. Quite a bunch is important, though not critical, and few are optional. So we will draw this red danger thingy only if critical things are not done. So of course I can go ahead and apply this, though I will lose possibility to show this in the next demo, so I will not do this. But imagine you have a bunch of domains like this, bunch of WordPress sites like this. You can go one by one. Yes, you can, but there is a better way. Select them all secure them all this is how you do it saves a lot of time i can tell you and it it's even more when compared to logging each and every wordpress website into the hosting going to wpconfig.php doing things manually there making a typo blocking the website so just a riskless and completely plain operation Updates, pretty much the same. Let me find a site which is not up to date. Yeah, you, of course you can expand. Every, every site has much more settings that, that we see here because it's just a general overview and you can, can go into in details. Uh, we will draw a screenshot so you can know what is a website and the updates are also highlighted if they are available Let's see how it looks like So obviously we have WordPress core and we scan the plugins and themes that are available for updates 
And this also applies to commercial plugins that are not available on WordPress.org. So if the plugin contains repository definition, we will connect to that repository and find the latest version. And we'll show it here. And the same is true for themes. Now, while we are on themes, let me quickly show you. So it is known some plugins cause issues, like they force the server to consume too much CPU time in cycles for not without any apparent use for this, and you might want to disable them. Of course, you can log into each and every WordPress site to do this from admin uh, dashboard, but you can do this in a nicer way. List all the plugins installed on all the, uh, all the sites here, and say, okay, I don't like this one, and this one. I just deactivate them. Done. This is how you must manage your hosting, your clients. It, and it's pretty much like in between morning coffee and the sandwich. You just log in. You can do this from mobile as well. It's fully a reactive interface. You can do this on the go. If something needs to be tested or urgently actioned upon, you just log in from your phone, do things if your customer is happy. Likewise, you can install plugins. If you have a nice plugin you want everywhere, you can install it on all the sites or uninstall or update in one go. And the same is true for themes. You can list them all. You can activate, deactivate, install, uninstall from many sites at once in one go. Continue this topic. Sets, there is a nice feature, really nice. You can predefine a set of plugins and themes you want to pre-install with every new site you install on a given service plan. Say, for instance, we have e-commerce pack. Let's see what's inside. Uh, formatting is not nice here. So I selected seven plugins. I want to be installed in e-commerce pack by default. These are super cache, SEO, contact form, a few others, WooCommerce, obviously, some payment gateway, menu. And a theme. So whenever I install this pack, I will get the latest WordPress version from WordPress.org and the latest plugins that I listed here, again, from WordPress.org, or I can upload my own plugin here in the set. So essentially what we have here is complete out of the box ready-made online store for e-commerce, say easy, easy start for anyone and easy revenue opportunity for you guys to attract new customers or to upgrade your existing customers who do something inferior to WooCommerce and, and WordPress. Coming back to updates. Yeah, I took a diversion. It wasn't clear, but yeah, it, it was quite important to mention this anyway. So updates. Uh, when it comes to updates, I say this is 300% secure. Why is this? Well, first we will do a restore point. Like it's it's by default, you can uncheck this though it's not recommended. Second, we have smart updates. I will show it in a while. And third, before actually updating, we will necessarily clone the website. And it's not exactly a restart point, it's a staging installation. So it's in in, in every one of the th three steps, you are secured and, and we got you back. If anything goes wrong, we just roll back to any of these steps. So, oh, okay, yeah, so before the magic starts, let me just quickly run through all the controls we have here. Right in front of you is what we have, website title that you can change, current version, who the website belongs to. Yeah, you can hijack administrator password if somebody lost it easily. Let's do it. I know it is a weak password, thank you very much, but for the demo purpose, fine. Once you hijack the password, so this can be potentially a manually installed website. So the customer installed on his hosting space without you knowing, so you don't know the password and imagine he lost the password, the customer. Now you changed it and you can go ahead and log into the website. There you go. I'm sorry, it's a little bit in a weird language, but anyway, it's just to demonstrate the concept that you can recover, not recover, you set admin password from this dashboard.
you can list all the plugins available with the website. List all the themes. Activate, deactivate them, update them. Check the database connection information or even open it straight from here. It will open PHP my admin. There we go. Yeah, as you can see, we are quite secure in this. So we will add a pretty much random regenerated prefix to all the table names and all the default credentials are pretty much randomized. So we can claim this is secure. Some obvious controls like search engine indexing, nginx caching, this is more, more of the hosting settings, but nonetheless, we expose it here. Why it's not enabled by default? Because of some, uh, for example, shopping cart compatibility issues, you will need to add specific cookie that you don't want to cache, otherwise your shopping cart will not work effectively. And a few other stuff. What is actually nice here, we can create a clone of the website for experiment. So this is actually a one more scene of WordPress hosting, doing experiments or trying things on the live website with risk of mistakes and going offline. So how normally do we do this? And this is where we come to work, workflow management. Before any experiment, you may want to clone the website to actually make yourself a staging environment. So how it looks like, as you can see here, it will create subdomain, the staging in its name. You can change it if you like. And the database name will be randomly generated. Let's do this. Well, obviously WordPress consists of a bunch of files, a database and some configs. Let's give it a few moments to, to, to finish. While it's working, I think I will look at the questions if you have any. Security same as Jetpack. Uh, it's not the same and you now it will not conflict. Jetpack is coming in, in the next update. So we will integrate with Jetpack tightly. So this is coming and no conflicts are guaranteed. As I mentioned before, this is quite a low-end machine, low-end DPS. It takes a bit more time than it would usually take on a normal grade hosting server. So yeah, it's done. Let's see what we have. No, I don't want your update. That's my laptop, sorry about this. All right, so this is my staging. As you can see, by default, we disable search indexing for the staging website. I can enable this, though normally I wouldn't because it's a staging. Coming back to workflow management, we can add a label like this is staging. And then you have many of those. And if you want to make a cleanup, for example, you can list by the tag, by the label, say all staging on all test sites, list them by the tag and re remove them all together. So I mentioned experiments. Let's do one. So I log into my staging website. This is fine because the host name has changed and certificate hasn't. This is quite a valid error. I will just go ahead. Again, apologize for the language of the website. So what I want to do actually is 
to just change a few things and synchronize them back to the main website, which I will open right in the next tab. Right, so, okay, something is here. Let's assume my experiment will be to change something on the main page. Like I lost it. Okay. Main page. So let me change a few words just just for the sake of it. Okay, I'm just add a header. Okay, so what we have now, we have some change in the staging website. This is it. And we have our unchanged production website. See, no test prefix here. What I need to do to actually bring this change back to the production website. So if I know how WordPress works, which I obviously do, I will need to copy my posts table from the database of this site to, to this site. It's quite a tedious task. If Even if you know what you're doing, it's quite dangerous. It's prone to mistakes. So I want to reduce manual labor in this sense as much as I can. And for this, we have this nice clone copy data functions. It's quite granular. You can select what you want to copy between the websites. Um, it's, it's quite cloggy here because as an admin of the website, I see all the websites. If I were a customer, I would see only websites belonging to me. But since I'm an admin, I have bigger privileges here. I see all of them. So I can actually bring some changes from one site to a completely different website. Not the purpose of this test. So I will use my original website. So from staging to the original site, I copy files, database, files and database, replace, okay. And see, by default, we, ex we do an exception for posts and users and some other tables to be on the safe side. We met situations when changes were actually brought to production website without people expecting this. And we get a lot of tickets and support like, okay, plus ruined my website, what, what I'm doing now. So by default, we do an exception for these tables, but my intention now is to actually do this. So I do this, create a restore point. As I mentioned, we are completely secure. If it goes wrong, you can roll back at any point of time. Let's do this. While in progress, let me quickly see the questions, if any. More questions, okay. And I think there was a chat somewhere. Yeah, nice one. What is Plask used for? Well, it's used to build, secure, and run your web applications. And since today we're speaking about WordPress, it's, well, I, I'm not supposed to say this, but likely it's the best tool to host and run WordPress websites. Already it's done. Okay, so what I'm expecting to see now is this change actually propagated to my production website. Let's refresh it. And there we go. So again, within under five minutes, I made a clone on the website. I made a change, some experiment. I made sure the experiment worked out and I cloned the results of this experiment back to my production website. This is it. This is what we see here. It's quite awesome, I think. And again, it guarantees you that you never ruin your live website as a result of some trial and some experiment. Quite nice. So this staging is done. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
delete this. Remove a yep. And the last one, this is quite actually a magical part. Smart updates. This is quite unique feature. Uh, you might have heard about um, perfect dashboard. So this is inspired by it, but the engine on the background is completely different. You see some updates. Let's make sure that smart update is enabled. It is enabled. So I select this all. Normally, how update of the WordPress will look like. You log into the admin page, see that some updates available for themes and plugins, and then you scratch your head, okay, if I update this plugin, will it actually work afterwards? Will it be compatible with my new WordPress core? So, so many questions, so little answers, and you simply just thinking whether is it worth to accept the risk or it's just okay to leave it as is and become a wide open attack surface because you know most of the plugins are open source and they're perfect target for different attacks on the internet. So this is how we do it here. Smart updates, select all the stuff, plugins, uh, themes, and obviously core, and just fire in the hole. Again, as I mentioned, we do a restore point, we do the clone of the website, and then magic starts, you will see it shortly. While it's working on it, let me quickly check what's happening. Um, I, I, I think, guys, it will be easier if you actually ask the questions in the Q&A section, because chat is a little bit too cloggy too. Uh, Plesk, uh, no, Plesk is not free, but you can have some limited functionality of what I'm showing in Digital Ocean, and then you can upgrade to a full-blown versions. Mm, what is the difference between WordPress and Plesk? Well, Plesk provides engine for WordPress to run. It provides engine for many more things, but in context of today's discussion, it's perfect for WordPress to run on. And of course, Exabytes has certified team. I actually did this myself. I went to Penang to actually read the course and, and take exams. So they have perfect support team to explain you benefits of Plesk running on Exabytes infrastructure, that's for sure. Um, 20 minutes more, I think. Hi, Vladimir. So we actually have some questions right now, and uh, this one's from Jackie. I think uh, while we're waiting, you might answer a few. So um, Jackie is asking, is clone similar to a child theme? Not exactly similar. So clone is a complete copy of the website, including the, all the files and all the databases, the database array. Child theme is more... Uh, mm, Mm -hmm. is a, is, well, if you speak programming languages terms, child team is a fork of the old code. And it, it, so, okay, let me put it this way. Child team is a subset of our clone functionality. So it's, it gives you a little bit similar experience, but in, in a smaller context. It doesn't work mm -hmm. for entire website, just for the theme. Hope I answered. I see. And uh, we also have another question from Calvin Ng. Now, Calvin's question is, my current website is on cPanel. Is it possible to migrate to Plesk? And does it require server management uh, site to do it? Um, yes, it is possible to migrate to Plesk. And yes, we do provide tools to have your just FTP login and password without root login, if you ask for this. And then having this at hands, you can migrate. I will show it a bit later, just I'll leave it open here and I'll return okay. when we are clo closer to end. Um, okay. okay, so done here. And now behold, I have this slider. 
and it shows what the website was and will be after I apply the selected update. See this in the upper right corner here, sample page, short codes test, some fonts has changed. And this is what you are shown, what you are presented with when you do smart updates. And you can visually see all the changes. And it does it for every page of the given website. And it gives you an assessment that update for this certain page forecast is positive. No, no issues were found. So you can just go ahead and blindly update this. But let's check other pages. If I scroll down here, I see some short calls of the plugins. And I obviously see some short code, some plugin is actually broken. So it was an older version and it, it's gone after the update. And if I go here, I see plugin short codes problems. Indicates a problem with broken plugin. And this is what you are also presented with. And for this page, you will get a notification that, okay, administrator, take a closer look to this website. It might not be updated correctly. So you better take a closer look. And pages with problems are marked with the red dot, so you won't miss them. And this is how we do it. Uh, pretty much you can do this at once for all the websites you host. Say you have 150, 148 of them will be updated just normally and just couple will give you a warning, but imagine the amount of time that you save doing it in a smart way rather than working with each and one individually. Again, I want to highlight this one because this guy will actually test all the input forms as well and it will check all the PHP warnings and errors. So this is ex exceptionally useful when it comes to WooCommerce and different plugins for it, for advanced shopping carts, for example. It's so easy to break them and you don't know whether it's broken before you actually go ahead and apply this. Um, so I will not do update for this website. I will need it for further demos, so I'll just discard. But concept, I think, is quite clear. You just apply smart updates to all the website, do them all in one, just two mouse clicks, and enjoy the results. All the websites will be updated, except those needing attention, but from my practice, it's just a very small portion of them. Right, so uh, migration, let me go over this one. We have a server-side migration, but since we don't have server access, let me quickly do it this. This is a general interface that you have, and we have website import function, which works over FTP. So you know your domain name, wherever it is hosted, and you need to know just your FTP or SSH credentials of your domain user on that server. What we will do next, using this access, we will upload an FTP. Well, essentially it's a Trojan, but with a peaceful uh, this designation. We will identify one of the applications. Since we know how applications work, we will know where to read the database data. So we connect to the database, dump it, pack it, send it over FTP to, to Plex server and deploy it here. Then the same you can do with mail. I see a few more questions. Currently my host next is shown cPanel. How can I migrate to Plesk? I think you better check with exabytes I, and I'm sure they will provide you help on migrating and I think it can be even free of charge. It, it, it really depends, so I, I think, yeah, speak to Exabyte's team. Oh, so we need to see panel double share. Add on for Plesk. Well, so these are two separate products. If you have a cPanel or WHM and you want Plesk, 
those will not work together on the same server. You need to get another server or a different package to work with them in parallel. Pricing, please speak to exabytes. I'm not authorized to interfere here. Yes, you can migrate to Plesk. Exabytes will help you with this. If you use FTP to transfer to cPanel, is it the same as Plesk import? Mm, sorry, can you please re re rewrite the question? I don't really get. If you use FTP, well, FTP is FTP. It's quite quite plain, quite simple. If you use FTP, FTP is the same in Plesk and in cPanel. If you have FTP access to Plesk to cPanel, you can use this to import it from this tool. Mm, all questions, I think. Yeah, we have quite some more minutes. Let me just quickly go over basics. Let me open a random site. What else have we here, apart from what I'm already covered? Access to file manager, quite easy. And file manager is actually advanced. You can modify your PHP code. Right from here, you have highlighting. You can do a copy of the config, or you can ruin the config if you like. You can remove the files, and zip, zip, and, and do so many things in one go, quite comprehensive. Again, the interface is responsive, so you will be able to use it from your mobile device. It supports drag and drop, so if you use uh, some GUI, let me just quickly show how it works. This is a file, I just drag and drop it here. Done. Likewise, I can download the file to my laptop without actually needing to connect to FTP. Ah, it made a shortcut. So it's, it's an issue with uh, Windows 10, mm, uh, Windows 10 Explorer. It creates shortcuts instead of downloading files, but when I used it on Windows 8.1, it just downloaded the file entirely. On your Macs, it will probably just download it straight off. Backups, of course, we do have backups. And backups are quite advanced. You can set up any cloud storage as a target. It can be FTP or it can be, so you can see Google Drive, S3 backup, or for this matter, it can be any S3 compatible storage. It can be OneDrive can be Dropbox, and well, pretty much every can be DigitalOcean Spaces. So every cloud storage you can imagine can be set up as a remote backup application and task to store your websites and your databases. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Hi, Vladimir. Okay, why don't uh, we tell our attendees a little bit more about the different editions of Yeah, absolutely. So Flask comes in three editions from, from the smallest to the biggest. Smallest edition is the web admin edition. It's intended for primarily just uh, server management without too much focus on WordPress. As you can see here, it has WordPress toolkit SE with reduced functionality. It has some basics, but no smart updates and no some like cloning and copying function is not there. It is limited to 10 domains only. It doesn't have subscription management. Account management and reseller management is also not there. It's the cheapest. Well, again, price is just an indicative. Probably you will get better price from Exabytes if you speak to them. Next is Web Pro Edition. This is exactly aimed for web professionals, little studios of designers and developers who manage WordPress 
for the small companies and for their clients who are small businesses, for example, local shops, limited to 30 domains, has full-blown WordPress toolkit, has subscription and account management. It lacks only reseller management, but this is not the case when it comes to like high touch manual operations for small for small businesses. And web host edition, it's unlimited. It, it has all the same features as web pro edition, but it has unlimited domains and it includes a reseller manual. Not only all editions. Right, cool. <laughs> yeah, just just a five cents that we have a growing <laughs> extensions catalog, which now includes like 140 something extensions for any purpose you can imagine. It can be backup, collaboration, antivirus, mail security, whatnot, CDN integration. All these are also available through Exabytes. I think I'm done, Lorraine. To you. All right. Um, so for the rest of the attendees who are currently watching right now, if you still have any more questions, please put them in the Q&A box. Uh, let's just go through very quickly. Do we have any more questions left? I think at the moment we don't. Uh, but if you do, feel free to put them in the chat box. And of course, you can always put them in the Q&A box right now because Vladimir is still online with us and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. I think we can give them a little bit more of time, perhaps another two minutes. Is there anything you'd like to say to wrap up your session, Vladimir? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. Well, actually, so there is a question. Can... There is a question, yeah. so let me answer it live. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if the cPanel being installed with Flask, am I able to manage my WordPress site on other HTML site from cPanel? Or can I be able to use functions in cPanel? Well, okay, again, cPanel and Flask are two, well, they were competitors, now they're sister companies, but still they're two different products. If you have cPanel, you work in cPanel. If you want to move to Plesk, you move to Plesk and then work from Plesk. And Plesk does provide ability to export WordPress and other sites in easy form. So you can just copy the, webs uh, the website files from File Manager, like I shown, and you can easily dump the database. Let me just quickly go over this, just almost instantly. There is a, a database which I can dump in a normal MySQL dump format like this. And then you can copy it over to any other hosting if you want. And likewise, if you have a dump, you can import this and create a database from scratch. Plesk. Is Plesk able to run different web creating websites such as WordPress and many more? Yes, of course. So today we've spoken about WordPress a lot. So WordPress is definitely yes. Then it's Joomla. Then it's pretty much any PHP, Python, Node.js, Ruby, or otherwise a website. So it's compatible with pretty much any modern web technology you can find. All right. Um, I think it's our attendees don't have any more questions. I think we can wrap this session up. Yeah, I think oh, okay. so too. Thank you oh, so wait, very Jackie, much, guys. Uh, Jackie actually sent in another question before you go. I think they're taking oh. some time to type out here. Uh, okay, so the question is, I created my website using a bot theme with WordPress and, uh, manager and, and I manage and update it by myself. Which plan should I go with? To be very honest, I'm not sure about plan. So if, if the question is, if, if Jackie wants to uh, deploy full power of WordPress toolkit, then it's minimal web pro edition. If I understood the question correctly, if not, just type, type it differently. <laughs> okay, and then um, Edward is also asking, is there a staging function uh, before we push it live? Yeah, of course, there is a staging function. I talked a lot of that. Let me just quickly remind where to find it. So this is your WordPress. This is your WordPress and there is a, oops, oops, so many windows. And you expand it and this is a clone. Yes, you can do a staging website before you go live. Yes, of course you can do it. And then when you're done with the staging, you can copy the all you have done to the production website. Can Perfect. I manage DNS with Plesk? Yes, you can. Again, let me just quickly run over this. And we have three minutes more. I think I have <laughs> 180 yeah, you, seconds. You've got, you, you've got time. Don't worry. You've got three minutes more. It's all good. 
right, right, right. DNS, yeah, absolutely. You can manage DNS and you can do DNS templates to apply to all the websites in a, uh, in a simple way, or you can do it custom. You can uh, put pretty much every record types you can imagine of. You can host DNS yourself. We support bind Microsoft DNS, or you can offload DNS hosting to some other providers up to you. So yeah, DNS management is in place. All right, super. Uh, so Vladimir, if as our viewers or attendees would like to contact you, how will they do that? If they have uh, any more well, questions? I can share my personal mail if you prefer, or we can communicate through Exabytes team. So I'm open. Uh, perhaps you could leave your email in uh, the chat box, that would be great. So if they have any questions, Thanks, perhaps sir. they can email you. But of course, guys, if you have any more questions regarding Plesk and Exabytes, feel free to head on over to exabytes.com.my uh, as well. And you can ask your questions there. But of course, you can always direct your questions to Vladimir here as well. And uh, I think we'll wrap things up. Thank you so much for your sharing session. I know it's really early in the morning there. I think it's about 9, 9 a.m., right, where you are right now? Well, actually, it's close to 1 p.m. now, so we are almost in the same time zone. It's, it's quite okay. Oh, wait, hang on. I was, I was led to believe that, you know, you were like five hours behind. <laughs> well, okay. the reason is there are eight time zones in Russia. I'm in the middle. Oh, <laughs> right. Okay, I've learned something new today. Well, Vladimir, thank you so much for your time being here. And uh, thank you for everything they have brought to the table here at WebFest 2020. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for having me here. And I hope you enjoyed it. And speak to you. Bye, see you. Okay, bye, be safe. Thank you. Exabytes. Grow your business online.